you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. On a cold and gloomy day in LaGuardia Field, Ken and the chief stand watching a great transatlantic plane take off. Well, there he goes, Ken. Yeah, off to London. Sir Robert Beaumont. Mm, chief, I don't know. Don't know what? Whole thing's simple enough. Oh, sure. The British Air Ministry makes arrangements ahead of time. Their representative arrives here and presents his credentials. The Army hands him blueprints of the new supersonic missile. And he catches a plane back to England. I agree with you, Chief. It is simple. Then why worry? Oh, call it a hunch. Anyhow, we can't do anything here. Come on, Chief. Let's grab a taxi. If you're looking for a taxi, if this isn't the one, then, then what is it? Felschmidt. Pagon, oh no. Hello, Mr. Thurston. It's about time you noticed what me. What the... What are you doing out here? <laughs> I just told you, driving a taxi. Come on, get in. Won't even put the flag down. <laughs> I'll bet the owner'd like to know about that. Oh, him, it belongs to Uncle Ahmed, and he's in jail for reckless driving. Come on, I got special rates for very dear friends. May as well get in, Chief. The only cab around. Very surprised at you, Mr. Thurston. Saying goodbye to such a no-good crook like that, that Count Heeland fellow. Heeland? Why, Pagan, that was Sir Robert Beaumont. Huh? No, when I knew him in Istanbul, he was a spy. Uh-uh. Good Lord, can it can't be. Oh, as it can, Chief. Pagan, drive to the office of the Bureau and make it fast. Be it, Ken. Uh, here, here, you take it. Thanks, Chief. Hello. It's your call to Wimbledon, England, Mr. Thurston. Good. Hello? Who is it? Sir Robert, my name's Ken Thurston. Huh? You don't know me, and I haven't got time to explain. No, in which case, sir, I fail to understand what business Nor you have. Nor can I understand how you were able to pick up some blueprints here in New York, then be back in England to answer your phone two hours later. You're mistaken, sir. I've not been away from Wimbledon. What about the supersonic missile designs to be delivered to the British Air Ministry? I know nothing of any such designs, Mr. Thurston. Then I think I'd better call the Air Ministry. Uh, no, I, I strongly advise you against any such foolish proceedings as calling the Air Ministry. In regard to the matter you mentioned, I assure you that everything is quite in order. I, uh, uh good day, sir. Well, Ken? Pagan, you say you were a friend of that, uh, Heeland fella? Well, not exactly a friend, Mr. Thurston. He's a crook, you understand, so of course it was a very slight acquaintance. Oh, sure, yes. Well, uh, starting right now, you're out of the taxi business. Come on, we're going to England. Then uh, where are all these tennis courts? Pardon me, is this uh, cab engaged? Why, no, sir. You are welcome to its services. Thanks. Get in, Pagan. Do uh, you know where Beaumont Manor is? Oh, yes, sir. It's about uh, three or four miles from here. Good. Well, that's where we're going. Oh. Oh, I say, Jenkins, you're already engaged. Well, huh? sorry, Mr. Norman. Uh, uh, but perhaps these gentlemen wouldn't mind sharing with you. They're going to the manor themselves. Oh. It would be a great help if you would, you know. Uh, my name is Winston Norman, down from London, you know. My name's uh, Ken Thurston, Mr. Norman, and this is Mr. Zellschmidt. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I'd be glad to have you along. Oh, thanks very much. Awfully decent of you. I was so afraid that I... Oh, oh dear. Mr. Thurston, look. You, um... Uh, you dropped your gun, Mr. Norman, here. <laughs> thanks. It's clumsy of me. I'm not used to getting one, you know. All right, driver. Uh, it's not customary at all. I mean, I hope you don't think that I was... Something fishy about you, mister. 
Maybe you're going out there to bump off old man Beaumont. Sir Robert? Oh, I say now, after all, he's, he's practically my father-in-law. I'm engaged to his, his ward, you know. His ward? Yes, Lisa. Lisa Thompson. So uh, that's why you're going to the manor? No. Mr. Thurston, I have reason to believe something may be wrong up there. Yes, I have one or two reasons like that myself. Just what business are you in up in London, anyway? Packing a rod. Oh, I'm not in business at all, Mr. Zellschmidt, if you mean the trades. As a matter of fact, I'm in the office of the Air Ministry. How long do we have to wait here, Mr. X? This room gives me the creeps. I don't know, Peg. On according to the butler, Sir Robert wanted to see Mr. Norman first. Oh. Hey, somebody's coming. Yeah. Well, Mr. Norman? Mr. Thurston, Sir Robert would like to see you in the billiard room, alone. Fine. See you later, Pagon. Mr. Thurston, don't leave me here with this assassinator. Talk to him. Entertain him. Tell him about your Aunt Tallulah. But, Mr. Thurston... <laughs> Excellent shot, Mr. Thurston. You're quite a proficient billiard player, you know. Thanks. But, of course, I didn't come here to play billiards, Sir Robert. I dare say you didn't. Uh, perhaps against the far cushion with a slight spin. Oh. That's too bad. It takes uh, pretty steady nerves for a shot like that. Quite so. Uh, why did you come here, Mr. Thurston? Let's say I didn't want a certain set of blueprints to fall into the wrong hands. And what, may I ask, would you consider the wrong hands? With the gadget as deadly as that supersonic missile, any hands might be the wrong ones. It's your shot, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Now let's uh, try for a cannon off the cush. Amazing. You're either very skillful or very lucky, Mr. Thurston. This kind of a game takes a little of both. Where are the blueprints now? Don't you think that's really the concern of the Air Ministry? After all, the man who received the plans in New York carried the proper credentials, didn't he? Yes, yes. And he also carried your name. I have no explanation, no comment. I see. It's, um, your shot, Sir Robert. Oh, what a spooky house. Probably haunted. I wish Mr. X would come back. Or even that Mr. Norman character. At least he had a gun. Such pictures they got on the walls. Ha, dead people. Give anybody the heebie jeebies. Huh? Somebody's there. They're coming this way. Who, who's there? Get your hands up. But. Don't move. But, but. Zell Schmidt. Huh? Oh, 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 Count Heeland, my old friend. Never mind that old friend stuff. What are you doing here? Oh, I came here with, with Mr. Thurston. I mean, oh, I... Oh, what? Who's Mr. Thurston? Oh, why, he's the one... Oh, 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 no, no. No, no, I can't tell you. Not for a thousand bucks. Haven't changed, have you? Well, it just happens that I have a thousand bucks here. Oh, I couldn't possibly... Ooh. Who is Thurston? No, I couldn't. I... Who is he? He's the man called X. So that's it. 400, 500, and 600. Oh, sure, sure. And 700. What are you going to do now? Nothing, Pagan. Just going to get my $1,000 back. Huh? Oh, no. Wait. Oh! Oh, too bad, Sir Robert. You've jerked the cue just as it hit the ball. Probably... Nervous reflex. It's out of the question, Mr. Thurston. I can't discuss it with you. What, the billiard shirt? You know quite well what I mean. I have very good reasons, but my ward, Lisa, I, I simply can't. You, you dropped your cue, Sir Robert. Here. What about Lisa? Can't you leave the subject alone? Won't you simply accept the fact that I can't talk to you about it? No. With a secret as deadly as that on the loose, I won't accept any kind of lying. I beg your pardon, sir. With all due respect to your name and your age, one way or another, you're going to talk. Very well. I'll tell you what it's all about. It means relying entirely upon your discretion, Mr. Thurston. 
It's a dangerous business. And if anything goes wrong, then heaven help all of us. to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken's hard-driving questions at last paid off, and Sir Robert Beaumont agreed to tell what he knew of a certain highly secret set of blueprints delivered by the United States Army to a man posing as Sir Robert himself. But according to Pagan, that man is really Count Helan, a dangerous international crook. Just how dangerous, Pagan discovered later, much to his own misfortune. Pagan. Pagon, snap out of it. Rather nasty blow someone's given him, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, come on, Pagon. Wake up. Huh? Um, Mr. Thurston, I've been... Uh, I've been robbed. A whole thousand dollars, gone with the wind. You're delirious. Where'd you get a thousand bucks? Why, for telling him that... Uh, I mean, I... Uh... Oh, Heelander. Oh. Uh... I didn't mean to tell him, Mr. X. He beat me. He, he threatened to kill me. He, oh, uh, he... pipe down. Oh. Well, Sir Robert, he's been here now and he knows who I am. You've got to move. Move fast. One thing must be clear, Mr. Thurston. We can't let anything happen to Lisa. I'll go with you on that. Lisa? Pagan, your friend, Heland, is holding Lisa Thompson a prisoner somewhere. Ha, I told you he was a crook. Yeah, but why? To force me to turn over my credentials from the air ministry and keep still while he went to New York and picked up those plans. What a low life. And then he stole a thousand bucks from me. Uh, Heland used to keep a flat up in London in the neighborhood of Covent Garden, a few doors from the Tavistock Hotel. I have the address in my files. Well, we've got to start looking somewhere. All right, Sir Robert. Let's have that address. Easy now. This is the house. <laughs> but maybe he's in there, Mr. X. Right behind the door. But they can't. Well, I've got one, too, so we're even. Stand to one side. Good. Nobody home. Who, who is it? Miss Thompson. Are you alone? Yes. Who are you? I'm Ken Thurston, a friend of your guardian. I've come to take you home. Oh, thank heaven. I can't let you in, you know. I haven't the key. And stand back. We'll give it a try. Come on, Pagan. Sure. Uh. I've given up all hope of ever getting out of here. It's been more than a week. Oh, well, it's over now, Miss Thompson. Is this the only room? No. no there are three. Just this one door. Uh. Has Helen been here today? Helen? Yeah, the man who's been holding you here. Oh, but that couldn't be. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't see this man's face. He disguised his voice, but it couldn't be Helen. I, I know him. He's Sir Robert's chauffeur. Mr. Thurston, somebody's coming. You're wrong, Mr. Zellschmidt. I'm already here. Put up your hands. When? Mr. Norman. That gun's going to get you into trouble. Are you all right, Lisa? Am I in time? When? Darling, Mr. Thurston just broke in to rescue me. Of course I'm all right. But I thought... Miss Thompson, that he... this man with the disguised voice, could it have been Mr. Norman here? Oh, you don't understand. When and I are engaged, we're going to be married. Yes. Well, a perfectly silly idea. Uh, I, uh, I guess it was of that. All right. Let's go back to Beaumont Manor. Oh, my dear Lisa, you've no idea how I've suffered during the past week, not knowing where you were nor what might have happened to you. Thank heaven you're safe now. Yes, thanks to Mr. Thurston. But I don't understand. He says it was Helen. Oh, yes, Lisa, dear, I'm afraid it was. Was it for ransom or what? Uh, Lisa, darling, you, you, you don't want to hear about it tonight. You must be terribly nervous after such an ordeal, eh? I was. Now that I'm back home, you know, I... silly, of course, I'm just hungry. Uh, well, we can soon take care of that. I'll have Arthur bring you something. We're very fortunate it all ended as happily as this. I think you're forgetting something, Sir Robert. As long as those plans are on the loose, the thing hasn't ended. So, I'm going to sit up and wait for Helen to appear. Uh, what? But I don't follow you, sir. 
Why do you expect Heelan to come back here? Oh, there might be several reasons. Revenge, maybe. Or when he finds Miss Thompson's escaped, he might try to get her back. And, of course, it could be that he finds this place attractive. I do. You uh, seem to be quite fond of billiards, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, I am, yeah. Seldom get a chance to play, though. Huh? Nice shot. Don't you want the champagne can? I poured it for you ten minutes ago. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about it. Thanks. It's quiet here with everybody in bed. Isn't there at least a family ghost in the house? I've <laughs> never heard of one. You think you'll really come here tonight? Who? Oh, Helen. Hmm? Oh, I'm pretty sure of it. I suppose I ought to be scared. But I'm not with you here. And there's Mr. Norman, of course. He's a nice boy. Would you like some more champagne, Ken? Uh, no, thanks, Lisa. No, I, uh... Sheesh. I feel a little, um... Dizzy, as a matter of fact. Dizzy? Something wrong? I don't know. I... Uh... Oh, it's strange. I feel like... Uh... Ken! Ken, can you hear me? Ken! <laughs> Good. Shh, why not? Come on, lad. McBinnis, Lisa. Now you come. The bill at all. Off the stella. Herr Thurston is unbewusst. Jawohl. In the good part of good. <gasps> you. That's right, Lisa. It's a gun. You're not unconscious. No, I probably would have been if I hadn't dumped that champagne behind the table. All right, you're more clever than I thought. How did you find out? Oh, Lisa. One look at that flat in London. I knew you had to be in on it. Two street-level windows with a bobby walking his beat in front of him. And you claimed to be a prisoner. We didn't count on anyone coming there. Not even possible customers. <laughs> he even turned the plans for that supersonic missile over to you, didn't he? I don't remember. Did you care to search me, Ken? I might later. After I get your partner. What makes you so sure he'll come here? For one thing, I heard you call him on the phone, remember? So? What are you going to do? Wait here for him, that's all. It won't be a very long wait, Thurston. Now drop the gun. What? Well, Heeland, you made a quick trip. I didn't have far to come. I suppose that's an inter-house phone. You were already here, huh? Yes, at the gatehouse. What happened, Lisa? You said he was unconscious. He was only pretending he knew all the time. Kill him now. Well, that's an interesting suggestion. It's probably the best idea. Be all right if I try a shot or two here while you make up your mind? <laughs> Go ahead, if your nerve is steady enough. Better kill him now. I tell you, he's clever. But, my dear Lisa, so am I. Nice shot, Thurston. Steady nerves and a little luck. That's all it takes. Maybe. Only your luck has all run out. <laughs> In the language of your game, Thurston, you're right behind the eight ball. You must be thinking of another game, Heeland. There isn't any eight ball in this one. Now. I suppose the idea is to sell the plans to the highest bidder, is that it? Oh, it's a much better idea. I'm going to sell them to all the bidders. Any reason for the question? No, just making conversation. It helps things. Oh, sorry. Don't cut <laughs> Drop the cue. Maybe you're not so calm after all. No, leave it lie. I'll use another one out of the rack. This one ought to do just as well. Uh! No, 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 Lisa. I'll take that gun, thanks. I'll get back. What are you going to do? You, you won't shoot me. You can't turn me in. Oh, can't I? Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, where are you? In here, Pagan. Well, I got it all taken care of, Mr. Thurston. We got the joints surrounded. Scotland Yard is all over the place. We'll catch this double crossing. Hey, what's happened? Argument over a billiard game. You're too late. It's all over. It's Count Heeland, huh? Out like a wet blanket. Mr. X, did you find the blueprints? Oh, I'm pretty certain Lisa's carrying them. Well, then, that's that. And all's well that ends well. Yes, what Lisa said. End of good, all is good. Only it hasn't ended yet, Pagan. Because here and there, 
All over the world, there are people like these two who are always ready to sell out to the highest bidder. As long as fair-minded humans are being put behind the eight ball, then we can't expect very many things in this old world to end well. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks, Wen. Tonight's something of an occasion because it marks the beginning of the second year with us of two people who've meant a great deal to our Frigidaire program. One is Johnny Green, whose fine composing and conducting have given us such outstanding music week after week. And the other is our director, Jack Johnstone, whose able guidance is seldom fully appreciated outside the studio. We owe a great deal to them. We think a great deal of them and we would like you to know it. Next week, our story is called Spirit of the Snows, and I think it's a honey. As usual, of course, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagon Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.